train come because we got a train on the way. You know how sometimes when you go to the restaurant, they give you a little appetizer before you get your main meal. So I'm just a little appetizer before the main course is coming. Amen. And if you have your Bible this morning, I'm just going to Hebrews 11 and 1, a very familiar scripture. 
Um, it says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. And I'm going to stop right there this morning. And if I can use for a title this morning, I, you need to ask your neighbor, how big is your faith? Look at the neighbor on the other side and ask them, how big is your faith? Uh, my brothers and sisters, everyone can't handle your dream. They will seem so ridiculous to some people with small faith. Some people can't handle your success. Some people can't wrap their mind around how blessed you are. Instead of them trying to encourage you, they will try to sabotage your character. Not listening to you or anyone else, they try to bring other people in without doing their research. They will smile in your face and every time they'll be stabbing you in your back. They will lie on you and they'll say, oh, she didn't finish college, how she get that good job? Oh, every time you see him, he's being blessed. What he's doing, selling drugs? Oh, no, what he doing? Uh, outside doing something he don't have no business doing? Oh, what's she doing? Sleeping with the boss or dropping it like it's hot? But I stopped back on this Sunday morning just to encourage somebody in your spirit that whatever God has for you, it is for you. Can't no devil, can't no demon, can't no hater block your blessing. Because the devil is a liar. God is exalted and he will never be defeated. God has created blessing in the heavenly realms with your name on it. It doesn't matter how it seems. So I just stop out on Sunday morning just to let you know that it is your season to be blessed. It is your season to prosper. And I know the women's day is coming up, and I just stop by to show you all those pretty little skirts going out. It's right there for twenty dollars today. And I stop by to let you know that God say it's your season to break your season. somebody on this morning can we get a straight line uh, I said it's time for you to come to the front of the line um, let's turn around do a reverse okay it's time for you to come to the front of the line I need my women's right here just to move back and forth go side to side 
because when you're trying to go to the front of the line, there's always some distraction. Every time you get focused on God, something's always messing with you. Somebody is always trying to get in your way. But I come to tell you that God is an amazing God. I can tell you on today, I can be at the back of the line. But we serve a mighty God that anything can happen in a blink of an eye. And when I count to three, ladies, I need you to turn around. I said one, two, and three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come to tell somebody, thank you, ladies. I was at the back of the line, but God is moving me to the front of the line. Oh, you might didn't get that demonstration, but I come to tell you that it's your season to be made whole. Uh, let me call the witness. Come here, woman with the issue of blood. She was sick. She was bleeding for 12 years. She saw many physicians. She used all her money, and she still wasn't made whole. She was uh, busted, broke, busted, and disgusted. But she heard that Jesus was passing by. So she said that if I can get to Jesus, that I'd be able to be made whole. But one thing I like about the woman with the issue of blood, she didn't lose her faith because the Bible said that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Huh? I was going to get on the floor and crawl for y'all this morning because the issue of the lady with the issue of blood, she saw that Jesus was passing by and she said she don't care what people say, what people think. She said that she had to get to Jesus. So she said she was going to get down in the crowd. Out, and she was going to press her way to Jesus because she know if she can touch the him that's the H-E-M not the H-I-M she know that if she can get to Jesus that she'll be made whole but I want to tell you that all things work together for the good of God that love God for the good of those that love God you've been set apart to be chosen by God Every word that God has blessed over your life will come to pass. Because the Bible says in Ephesians 3 and 20, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we can act according to the power that works within me. And I just stopped by to tell you because God is the greatest power. We shall never be defeated. We shall rise. We shall be, we shall grow, and get to win, and to God be the Lord. I seen it. Okay. Uh, the men have an outing on July 16th, this Saturday, at Castaway Bowling Alley. Please see Reverend Ferguson at the immediately after service. Amen. Uh, July 24th will be 
Men and Women's Day. Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, the assessment for all is $25. The colors for the women are leopard and red. The men will be in walking suits. Amen. Now, don't let none of these uh, wardrobes keep you from coming out. Amen. We coming to bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They on fire in here today. They on fire up in here today. Also, we're going to ask that you all will. I can't see. July 31st is friends and family immediately following service. We will have an outdoor picnic. Family is welcome to stay. Also, pastor's 22nd year anniversary is vastly approaching. Thursday, November 10th, climaxing at 1.30 p.m. on Sunday, November the 13th. Assessments for leaders are 300, members 200, ministries 500. More details to follow. Amen. Lord God, we ask that you will Bless this offering and use it for the upbuilding of your mighty kingdom. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Give our praise team a hand of praise as they come. Come on, y'all. Take us up.
I got some sense, right? This pastor is not here. And I don't want to act a fool. But how many know that you have the victory? And I don't care what it looks like. And I don't care what it feels like. And I don't care what the enemy keeps putting in my way. I have the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let us all stand. Amen. Give a hand to this band. I love him so much to our pastor in his absence. Amen. Um, thank God for this opportunity. Now, AJ set me up. Let me tell y'all. She's supposed to be my girl, right? Let me tell you. She set me up. Minister AJ. Minister AJ. Minister AJ Brew, right there. She set me up, right? Come up here snapping and going off and stuff like that. Come on, bless her. And then Minister Monita, I think, honestly, okay, I'll say that for another time. But come on and give it up for Minister Monita Ferguson. Hallelujah. Come on and let's get to this word. Amen. Matthew 17. Hallelujah. Matthew 17. <laughs> Starting at verse 14. Let me know when you have it. Say, I got it. And it reads as following. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? Now, I thought about this because even after Jesus rebuked them and said, you know, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? They still was like, wait, wait, we need to know why we can't do this. So even though he rebuked them, they still wanted to know why they don't have the power. I love that. You know, when we do open rebuke, somebody be like, oh, he ain't talking to me. We don't want to hear nothing else. But they said, let me find out why I can't do this. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And so, for a title, I want you to ask your neighbor say, Neighbor, do you have cracks in your foundation? Come on, ask another neighbor say, Neighbor. Do you have cracks in your foundation? You may take your seats. Have you ever seen or visited the most beautiful homes? They are simply gorgeous. It has the most amazing hardwood floors throughout the entire house. 
a massive kitchen with a gorgeous island that have them waterfall marble countertops. You know, them countertops that flow down on both sides to the floor. A huge stainless steel sink with the stainless steel appliances to match. And off the kitchen is a huge family room befitting to entertain your guests. So besides the, the beautiful kitchen and the family room, you look out the backyard and see this massive, enormous backyard with a pergola and fireplace. I'm painting a picture. Then you go upstairs and find amazingly spacious bedrooms and a master suite to live for. Everything is perfect. Everything is beyond what you've ever envisioned. Everything is in the rightful place. And although we're adoring the finished project, pr pr uh, pr product, <laughs> although we're adoring the finished product, we never factor in what it took to get to this stage. We never ever phantom considered or even think about all of the hard work and dedication it took to get here. The blood, the sweat, the tears of getting every detail perfected. The delays, the setbacks, the setups, the sacrifices, the struggles, the sleepless nights, and the cost it took to build. And let me just pause right here because people of God, others may look at you and, 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 and however they see God's glory, but however they don't understand your story. They look at the cover of your book and see that you're looking good, you're smelling good, and you're dressing good, but don't understand that the pages of your life reflect that there were many nights that you had no idea how you was going to eat or how you was going to feed your family. There were days you didn't have gas money to even go to work. There were days you didn't know where you were going to lay your head or you even had to sleep in your car to maintain, but God, when both of my sisters passed away or when you had a cherished loved one that departed from this earth, you thought you was going to lose your mind, but guess what? God kept you. When you were diagnosed with the illness and you thought you would never recover, oh, but God, there were times you felt like throwing in the towel, but my God supplied every one of your needs according to his riches in glory. It was by his grace that we made it right here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it was his grace. It was his grace that sustained me. It was his grace that covered me. It was his grace that protected me. When I thought I wouldn't be able to function, it was his grace that kept me. The grace that surpasses all of my mental faculties. I'm talking about that grace that saved us from death. I was born to die, but by God's grace, he has given us the opportunity to life, and not just life, y'all, but life that more abundantly. I'm still alive, and it's only by God's grace. I wasn't fit to live, but I wasn't ready to die, but his grace kept us. Tell somebody, it is his grace. Thank God I don't look like what I've been through, but guess what? His amazing grace kept me. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, so getting back to this house situation, we're adoring this magnificent structure, this amazing, captivating, fascinating home, and going through the process, one of the vital mistakes that we make is rushing the process. We want to get to the glitz and glamour, but not really considering if the foundation is sound. We're focused on the bells and the whistle of the final product that we don't put time to invest in the foundation that it's built on. If we rush the process, my God, of the building the foundation, 
we can end up with cracks in the foundation and those cracks will cost us the entire structure. Those beautiful hardwood floors, those flawless cabinets, those gorgeous countertops, all that stuff in the house will crumble if, there's, if there are cracks in the foundation. So ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you have cracks in your foundation? See, the problem is, is that society is teaching us to invest in the outer appearance. We're so focused on how to get these baby hairs down on these wigs so they can lay right. We're so focused on how to bring stuff up that then fell down over time, trying to do a little nipping there and a little tucking there and spraying a little Beijing and, a, you know, here, perfect, perfect your bits. Yeah, uh-huh. Or coloring the gray just so you can keep up. So focused on what people that we're not investing in what moves God. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, I like to look good, too, and I like to make sure, you know, my baby hairs is down, too. But at what cost? But at what cost? For the Bible says in Mark 8 and 36, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole wide world and lose his soul? So do I focus on my outer appearance to get vainglory from the world that the cracks go unnoticed? Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you have cracks in your foundation? Here in the scene of our text, we find the disciples that realize that they got cracks in their foundation. If you go back to the end of chapter 4 through chapter 9 of Matthew, you will understand that the disciples were in the hands of the master crafter. Jesus is the potter and the disciples, we are, we are the clay. He spent time laying the foundation and started building them brick by brick. Jesus allowed them to witness him perform miracle after miracle healing sickness, and casting out demons. They watched him shut down storms and the raging sea. They sat at his feet and he fed them spiritually, imparting his wisdom, breaking down flesh and building them spiritually, teaching them what is commonly known as the Beatitudes in Matthew 5. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. These are the things that Jesus was imparting into him. And every Sunday that we come to church, he imparts it to us. He gives us a word from the man or the woman of God so that we might eat and feast that it might shift our lives to a direction that he has ordained. So Jesus imparts his wisdom, structuring them, encouraging them, investing in their character, and building their faith. And now Jesus is on the mountain, and when he comes down, a certain man with a lunatic son recounts how he brought his child to the disciples, and they could not cast the demon out. Now, Jesus' response was, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? And I hear God saying, listen, you are my people, and it is my desire that greater work shall you do. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. But God is saying, although that is my desire, I cannot afford to put new wine into old vessels. Because the new wine will destroy you. Because you weren't able to handle it. And what I'm saying is, God is saying now it's time for us to start making some shiftings in our lives so that he can keep imparting his new wine in us that we might not burst. The Bible says in Hebrews 5 and 13, and I'm paraphrasing, paraphrasing, I wish you were able to bear the meat that I have prepared, but I find myself bringing you back to the basics. 
I find myself holding your hand to nurse you with milk. I find myself still nursing you on the bottle. Milk drinkers are not for war because they are unskillful babies that still need to be taught the basics. Babes don't know how to tame the flesh. Babes don't know how to control their emotions. In fact, babes do what feels good to their flesh. Babes allow negativity and strife in their flesh and produce the fruit thereof. Babes don't want to work, but they don't want others to upstage them either. So what they do is they try to discourage you from doing what God has ordained you to do. Babes reject those, quote unquote, do too much. Ah, she always doing too much. Ah, he always doing too much. Christians, that, that those people actually have a heart for God's work. That's what Paul says in Philipp Philippians. The saints are rejoicing because I'm locked up. Look at it. Anybody that has studied Paul's journey knows that he was the most prolific writer that always encouraged others after his Damascus experience. And Paul says the saints are rejoicing. Because I'm incarcerated so that they can advance their agenda. The saints are rejoicing so they can come and make a name for themselves. Now, who want to rejoice because one of our people of God is incarcerated, knowing that their life is dedicated to the cause of Christ? It's babes. It's babes. Tell somebody, it is babes. Babes reject workers of the faith for their own agenda. Oh, I'm here, God, I'm hearing God say, just as the disciples, my people still do not understand that I kicked Satan out of heaven like lightning. And my people, I have given you power, power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, power over all the things of the enemy, power to decree a thing and it shall be established, power to restore to you the years that the locust, that the canker worm, that the caterpillar and the palmer worm has eaten. Nothing shall by any means harm you. My God is saying, but the meat enter, the meat eaters have a spirit of discernment and can spiritually see the difference between good and evil. Meat eaters understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but meat eaters know that this fight is against the devil. Meat eaters know that this fight is against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Meat eaters understand that the devil, Satan, the worker of iniquity, Lucifer, our adversary, the evil one, has one mission. And you know what his mission is? And that mission is to steal your joy, kill your spirit, and destroy your life. Where my eat meat eaters at? I hear God saying how we graduate to become meat eaters is to sharpen our tools, which is through fasting and praying. See, we'll pray, but we don't want to fast. And God is saying it's time out for playing. And just praying because we're seeking things for God. And God has built us and made us and formed us in his image to do the work. That's why Jesus said to the disciples, you want to know how you cast out demons? You want to know how to heal the sick? You want to know how to raise the dead? How to save your children? Well, this is how. Only this deliverance comes through fasting and praying. This is how we fix the crack that is in our foundation. If my people were called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, it's only then when I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins. I will heal their land. For the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, a foolish man builds a house on sand. 
if you build the house on sand, it won't weather the storm. Please know that this is the reason we lack power because we don't want to sacrifice. We don't want to invest in building a solid foundation. But the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And so Esther understood this principle. She understood the potential of fasting. When the enemy sought to kill her people, she called for a fast and the enemy was destroyed in his own trap. Daniel understood the potential of fasting. He was able to withstand the, the temptation of the devil. Moses understood the assignment of fasting. His sacrifice produced the Ten Commandments. Ezra understood the strength of fasting. He called for a fast for direction, and God granted him the request. Jesus understood the power of fasting, and although his flesh was weak, his spirit was strong to reject the temptations of the devil. So what I'm saying to you, people of God, it's time for us to fast. If you want to reject and want to stand on God's word, if you want to hear what he is saying to us in this time, you got to learn how to fast. <laughs> Tell somebody you got to learn how to fast. And not just from food, but you got to fast from the things that, that is in your flesh that you know is leading you in a direction God has not ordained. Tell somebody you got to fast. If you want your child saved, you got to fast. If you want your child delivered, you got to fast. If you're looking for God to do something miraculous, you got to go find it. Because you're not ready. Y'all know we ain't gonna shout on this one, but we're not ready. We're not ready. We're not ready. Because even though we're praying, we're believing, we're trusting, we have to fast. If we're looking for the impossible, if we're looking for miraculousness, 
the season of ridiculousness it's there it's there tell somebody it's there and it's waiting on you but we got to humble ourselves fast and pray to the Lord deny our flesh because our flesh has power over us and what I'm saying is can you say no to some things now listen y'all I love Amazon I love to shop. But can I stop for just one week? So if y'all telling me yes, can you stop for one week? Can you give God seven days? Can you sacrifice seven days? just to hear clarity from the Lord can you do that this week yeah I'm going on a trip this week but God is saying it's time to start fasting it's time to start seeing because he has so much, y'all, every time I look in this crowd, I see millionaires. But it's because we don't push back certain things that he's calling us to stop doing. You want what God has for you? Fast. You want what God has for you? Do you really want to see the manifestation of why he created you? If you're doing good, do you know you can do better? If you're doing better, don't you know you can be great? If you're doing great, don't you know you could be doing amazing? Tell somebody fast, 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 fast. Push some stuff back. Stop, turn off that TV for a week. Whatever your device is, because a lot of times we say, well, girl, I can, I can stop eating. Okay, push the TV back. Whatever your vice is, push it back. Challenge yourself. Study his word to show ourselves approved. And I'm talking to myself, y'all. We got to start doing what God is calling us to do because we have not reached, we're not near the potential that he has for us. Tell somebody fast. Come on, give God some praise. Give God some praise. Mighty men and women of God. And all we have to do is fast. Amen. The doors of the church are open. Amen. If there's someone who wants to come and be a part of the body of Christ, you are welcome to do so at this time. I hope something was said that will help you to make the decision to want to surrender your life to Christ. Amen. Y'all, this fasting thing is still on me. If, if you're, if, if you're, if you're a cusser, stop cussing. I'm just saying. <laughs> if you smoke all type of stuff, stop smoking. Present your body a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable is your reason.
reasonable service. Amen. Come. Come to Christ. name of the Lord in this place. Amen. 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 If this word has blessed you in any way, I encourage you to sow into the woman of God. Amen. She was all in my business. We so selfish. We want God to give us everything, but we're not willing to give nothing back. Amen. Amen. She really messed me up when she started going to levels. If you good, you can be great. If you great, you can be amazing. A lot of times we stand in our own way. Amen. Amen. What a word. What a word. Come on, let's give Lady a hand of praise. Man, you know... She with the man of God, and you can see the anointing flowing right down to her. Amen. It's evident. It's evident. I thought I was going to have to open up the doors of the church. I say, she's a professional. Look at this. God bless her soul. Amen. Amen. Man, what a word. Was y'all blessed today? Was y'all blessed today? I'm going to start calling her, y'all remember Shotgun Sally? I'm going to start calling her Shotgun Chantra. She pulled out that shotgun on us today. You ain't got no choice but to bless the name of the Lord. Amen. We're going to ask her to come back and give us her final remarks and the words of benediction. Amen. Give her a hand of praise as she comes. Amen. Pray that something was said that bless your soul gave me that yesterday at two in the morning. I had something, oh, I was going to preach about the ridiculousness. I had something myself, and God said, nope, changed it up. But God wants us to fast. He wants us to commit ourselves to him. We do. We ask God for everything. God, bless my son. Bless my child. Bless my daughter. Bless my household. Bless my husband. Bless my marriage. God, cover me. Keep me. Hold me. Touch me. Rub me. God, do. God, God, God. But all he says, fast. Ah. God, thank you. God, we just thank you today. God, we thank you for our pastor, for allowing us, Lord God. Oh, God, to follow your will, Lord God. God, we just ask that everyone under the sound of my voice, even the people that are online, Lord God, that this word meditate in our spirits and in our souls, Lord God, that we might be obedient to your will, Lord God. Oh, God, that you might manifest all the things that you have created for our lives, Lord God. Oh, God, we ask that you will touch, Lord God, touch the musicians, Lord God. Bless them in a special way, God, and for this we say thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. You all are dismissed. Please keep in mind all of the announcements, women of God. Don't forget, if you would like to buy a t-shirt, you can see some men, um, oh, um, I want to say Nisi Poo. Uh, see, uh, Nisi, um, for your t-shirts. Amen. Amen. You all dismissed. Y'all sitting there.